Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number 120. Walan tarda, ankal Yahudu, walan nasara, hatta tatabiyum milatihum. The Jews and the Christians, they will never be satisfied until you follow their brand of religion. Allah says in the Quran, the Jews and the Christians, they will never be satisfied with the Muslim until you follow their brand of religion, until you become a Jew or a Christian. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number 111. Allah says, they say, the Jews and Christians, you Muslims, you shall never enter Jannah with all your piety, with all your tawheed, with all your fasting, with all your salah, with a mark on your forehead, with all the hajj, you shall never enter Jannah unless you become a Jew or a Christian. The Jews and the Christians, they come and tell us the Muslims, you Muslims, you shall never enter Jannah with all your piety, with all your fasting, with all your hajj, with your salah, with your tawheed, you shall never enter Jannah until you become a Jew or a Christian. Allah says, Tilka amani yuhum. This is their wishful thinking. Bakwas e bakwas, vain desires. Kul, tell them, ha tupunanakum, produce your proof in kuntum sadiqeen, but if you're truthful. Tell them to produce the proof if they're truthful. And these Christian missionaries, they have produced the proof. They have produced the Bible in no less than 2,000 different languages. My Bible says this, my Bible says that. My Bible says this, my Bible says that. What do we have to do? Do we have to follow the Bible hook, line and sinker? Whenever someone shows you his proof, suppose someone shows you his identity card, what do you do? You verify whether it is correct or not. You don't believe in it unless you verify. So if they have shown their proof, their Bible, what do we have to do? We have to verify it. Have we Muslims verified the proof? When Allah says, Kul hatu burhanakum, produce your proof, what does Allah say? Take the proof and believe in it? In kuntum sadiqeen, but if you're truthful. That means Allah is telling us to verify the proof. These Christian missionaries leave aside verifying their proof. What are they doing? They are using our burhan, our Quran against us. These Christian missionaries, they are using our Quran against the Muslims. There are hundreds of thousands of Christian missionaries throughout the world, millions of them. They come knocking at the doors of the Muslims and they ask the question, you are a Muslim? I said, yes, we are Muslims. It's mentioned in the Quran that Bible is the word of God and we say, yes, it's mentioned. Then why don't you follow the Bible? We have no reply. That's the next question. Then how many times is the name of your prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mentioned in the Quran. If you know, he'll give the reply that prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is mentioned by name in the Quran five times. Four as Muhammad, one says Ahmad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That's the next question. How many times is the name of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, mentioned in the Quran? If you don't know, they will tell you. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, Isa alayhi salam, is mentioned by name in the Quran 25 times. And if you check up, it is correct. They have the next question. Who is greater? A person who mentioned five times by name in the Quran is greater or a person who mentioned 25 times by name in the Quran is greater? Who is greater? Five or 25? Five or 25? Five. Five is greater than 25. Who is greater? A person who mentioned five times by name in the Quran is greater or a person who's mentioned 25 times by name in the Quran is greater? They ask the question, but they don't give you the reply. They let your mind think. They poison your mind. They come knocking at the doors of the Muslims. That's the next question. Your Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Did he have a mother and father? He said, yes, he had a mother and father. Did Prophet Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, did he have mother and father? He said, no. He had a mother, but he had no father. That's the next question. Who is greater? A person who's born with a mother and father is greater or a person who's born without a father is greater? Who's greater? A person who's born with a mother and father is greater or a person who's born without a father is greater? Who's greater? Who's greater? Person born? Who's greater? They ask the question, but they don't give the reply. They let your mind think. They use as Muslims as a punching bag. They use us like doormats. And believe me, Muslims can't even answer. That's the next question. Your Prophet, 
Muhammad peace be upon him. Did he do any miracles? He said, yes, he did many miracles. Did he any time give life to the dead? And we have to agree that no verse of the Quran, no Sahih Hadith says that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi gave life to the dead. That's the next question. Did Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, did he give life to the dead? And we have to agree the Quran says, be Allah, wake up in the name of Allah. Yes, he gave life to the dead. So who's greater? A person who can give life to the dead is greater or a person who cannot give life to the dead is greater? Who's greater? A person who can give life to the dead is greater or a person who cannot give life to the dead is greater? They ask the question, but they don't give you the reply. They let your mind think. They poison our minds. They ask the next question. Your Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is he physically dead or alive? He said, no, physically he's dead. He's buried in Medina. Is Isa alayhi salam dead or alive? We have to agree that according to the Quran, Surah Nisa chapter 4, verse 158, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised up Isa alayhi salam alive. So who's greater? A prophet who's dead is greater or a prophet who's alive is greater? Who's greater? A prophet who's dead is greater or a prophet who's alive is greater? Who's greater? They ask the question, but they don't give you the reply. They let your mind think. They poison your mind. They are using us Muslims like punching bags, like doormats, and we can't even open our mouth. All these replies are given in the Quran. If you read the Quran with understanding, all these replies are there, easy. All the replies are given. You don't have to be a scholar. You have to read the Quran with understanding. All these answers are given. See, doing da'wah is very easy. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, Kul yahil al kitab. Say, O oh people of the book, Ta'alo ila kalimatin sawa im bayna baynakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. Wala nushrika bihi shayyam. That we associate to partners with him. Wala yattakhiz abad, dun abad, dun arbab and minun illa. That we erect not among ourselves lords and pits other than Allah. Fine tawalla. If then they turn back. Fakulu shadu. Say ibe witness. Be anna muslimun. That we are Muslims bowing away to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'alo ila kalimatin sawa im bayna baynakum. Come to common terms as been us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. The most important point while doing da'wah is come to common terms. And in coming to common terms, the most important of this point is Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. You may talk anything about Islam. Oh, Islam is very good. It has got so many benefits, so and so things, everything. Good. About science, technology, fine. But if you do not touch Tawheed, all your da'wah is useless. If you do not stop the shirk that is there in the lifestyle of the non-Muslim, all your da'wah is useless. You can speak about other things than science and technology and Quran and all, fine. To get him to the main point of Tawheed, if you do not touch on Tawheed, Allah na'buda illallah, your da'wah is useless. And I've given a talk on concept of God in the major world religions. And if you read the scriptures of the major world religions, all these major world religions, in the scriptures, it is mentioned about one God. It mentions that God is only one. It mentions he's not begotten. It's mentioned that he has got no idols. He alone should be worshipped. Whether it be Hindu scriptures, whether it be Christian scriptures, Jewish scriptures, Parsi scriptures, all these scriptures mention about one God. But we Muslims, we have many excuses for not doing our job. Many Muslims come and tell me, but the Zakir, our knowledge is very weak. Inshallah, one day when we get enough knowledge, we start doing dawah. People want to wait till they want to become like Sheikh Ahmad Didad, and then they start doing dawah. That time will never come. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number four, hadith number 3461, propagate even if you know one verse about Islam. Even if you know one verse about Islam, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you propagate it. Whatever you know properly, as long as you know it correctly, it's your duty, you have to convey that message to the others.